Hey guys, thank you for checking out my video. With building 4.0, we saw a lot of major changes to the way you can build in Rust. A lot of great bases were crippled by the patch to roof stability bunkers, and we didn't seem to gain much besides triangle grills and ladder hatches. However, when I saw the new conditional roof pieces, it gave me an idea. So without further ado, let's go check out the base. This, my guys, is the pyramid. First thing we'll do is take a tour of it. This is a drop-off room, right by the front door for convenience. The interior core 2x2 two two is wrapped by a long hallway. And in the center, you have a bog standard 2x2, two 2-4. Two, two Now 2x2s two are nothing new to Rust. Anybody can build a 2x2. Two two. And I'm not going to tell you where to place every single box. The great thing about 2x2s two is that they're modular. You can pretty much lay it out any way you want to. When I first designed this space, I put auto turrets in the corners of the hallways. And instead of garage doors, I had um, chain link fences running through the hallways. It was an idea that my friend gave me. Basically, the thinking behind it is that when you come through the front door and come around the corner, you're met with three chain link fences and an auto turret. So before you can ensign rocket the auto turret, you're going to have to suicide rocket the chain link fences at least two times before you can damage the auto turret. I've had many people tell me it looks way better smaller from the outside and they're surprised by how much space we have in here. This one I actually built on my main server that I play. So that's pretty much it for the tour. After this we'll jump into a build server and I'll show you how you can live in your own temple. The first thing I need to do though is acknowledge some of the weaknesses of a design like this. There's no shooting floor. There's no windows at all. There's no roof for solar panels or windmills. I had to circumvent this problem by building a uh, by building a windmill tower and piping in the electricity. I was able to circumvent this problem by building a windmill tower and just wiring the electricity in. If you run into an issue with the length of the wire, just put an electrical component between your windmill and your um, battery and it'll help you double the range of the wire. In addition to external TCs, I also built a couple supplementary structures. This one here is a three car garage. However, I'm using the middle bay for horses. The pressure plates close the doors. They're all connected to door controllers, so when you back out your car, the door automatically closes. It has its own internal refinery. This one I definitely could have built better, but I kind of built it in a hurry. Keeping in mind it's next to this gorgeous pyramid, I would have went with something more aesthetically pleasing. This is the new furnace bases that are possible now because of the new triangle floor grills. Without further ado, we'll jump into a build server and I'll show you how you can build your own pyramid. Okay, now we're on a build server. I've got everything I need. The first thing you want to do is find a nice flat piece of ground, preferably in the desert, because you know, come on, we're building a pyramid. And you want to start by building a 2x2. Uh, two two. I've got B grade on, so everything's going to go straight to sheet metal. When you do this yourself, you can start in whatever grade you want. Just keep in mind, don't block yourself off so you're not able to upgrade pieces later on. 
And I'm going to try to build it in the same order you would if you were actually playing the game. First, you always want to secure the build site by putting a TC down. Uh, now, you can lay out the rest of the footprint and twig to make sure that it'll fit. You want to surround your 2x2 two two with a 4x4. Four four. And then you want to surround your 4x4 four four with a 6x6. Six six. Originally this would all be done in twig. And you're, keep in mind, you're just doing this to make sure that it actually fits. Now let's finish the 2x2. Two two. This square right here is going to be our jump up to the second floor. And then once again, if you're doing this in an actual server, you're going to want to seal yourself in. Make sure that you're safe so you can continue building. Depot materials. When I built it on my server, what I did was I ran the road getting scrap and took the scrap to outpost and traded the scrap for uh, sheet metal. I had already learned all my BPs this fight, so it took about 30k metal, maybe like 27k metal, so about 3,000 scrap, probably a little less. I was also getting scrap recycling running the road, but... And sheet metal, but not nearly enough to uh, use as materials for the base. Okay, now that the interior 2x2 is built, you can lay it out any way you want. The next thing you want to do is surround the 2x2 two two with a 4x4. Four four. Now the way I did it isn't the way you have to do it. It's just um, the best way I could think of on the fly. This is a, another loot room right outside the central 2x2. Two two. It's not as secure as the central one, but it's uh, still protected by this long hallway. Now what we're doing is surrounding the interior 2x2 two two with a hallway of um, sheet metal. Of course you're going to want to fill it with door frames and the door of your choice. But I'm not going to spend minutes at a time spamming in garage doors. The important part is seeing how to build the structure. Okay. And essentially this is the core of the base. You're going to want to keep in mind raid paths. So if this is our front door, going through the doors is actually going to be more expensive than going through the walls. So the walls that's facing the front door is going to be the first one you want to upgrade to arm them. Eventually you're going to want to upgrade the whole interior 2x2 two two to armor. Also when you get a tier 3 workbench, right here is where I put mine. Because it's on the opposite side of the front door. So even if they invest 15 rockets blowing that armored wall, they still have a tier 3 workbench to deal with. I'm going to stock the TC with sheet metal so it doesn't decay while we're sitting here building it. Okay, now that the interior structure is built, you can live out of this. But if the honeycomb is the pyramid, so eventually you're going to want to move forward and complete construction of your pyramid. 
The easiest way to place the roofs is probably going to be from inside for the first two floors. You're going to have to go outside and upgrade them. But this is a lot easier than climbing all over your base. Alright, I believe that's all the roofs for the capstone. Now we go to the 4x4 exterior and do the same thing. It's already starting to come together. The last step is going to be to pyramid the bottom of the base. One thing I forgot to mention though, and I did do this on the one I built, is if you want to leave these open, You can add interior walls the same way you would with any honeycomb. A base like this is really susceptible to splash damage, so anything you can do to um, help negate that will improve your survivability long term. Comb is done and it's all sectioned off. Now all that's left is to complete the bottom floor. Roofs are always wonky to place, but if you move around, eventually it will go blue. You might be hearing my baby in the background. Okay, and we're back at the front door. Now before we seal it up, let's do the same thing we did for the top two floors and run around sectioning off the um, honeycomb. Now that we're back at the front door, obviously you're going to want this one to face out. And what I didn't do for my own base that I did when I originally built it is I left this door as a single. The reason being is when you have squares, your choices for airlocks are pretty limited. But if you put double doors adjacent to your single door, you have an airlock. Um, 
So that's pretty much it. You two can live in your own pyramid. I know it's pretty role player, and I know it's not the strongest base in the world. But it definitely is cool looking. Okay, so before I leave you guys, I just wanted to take a second and acknowledge some of my favorite builders on YouTube. I'm pretty much subscribed to everybody big and small, so if I don't mention your name, that doesn't mean I don't watch you. But Vice Versa Games, Evil Worst, and My Gaming Experience are probably my three favorite builders on YouTube. And when it comes to gameplay, Rust gameplay, I always keep an eye out for shots and Alone in Tokyo. You guys are legends. I watch you every time you upload a video. So if you did like this video, let me know, and maybe I'll do some more. And hopefully you guys can live in your own pyramids. Or don't. Don't copy me. I did this for I did this for notoriety. I don't want anyone else to be living in pyramids. I want it to be my thing. Either way, I'll, I'll check you guys later.